So let us, uh, we'll go on to the next unit. It's called vector algebra. So one of the very important uh, chapter in your 12th standard syllabus. Why I am telling like this? Because in 12th standard syllabus, we have 10 chapters, 10 units. The most weightage chapter, the most weightage content is analytical geometry. Because from the analytical geometry, we will be getting 40 marks. Next to that chapter is vector algebra. Vector algebra has totally 38 marks. That is, your multiple choice question is 6 and your short answers is 2 and your long answer is, that is your detailed answer is 2. Overall 6 plus 12 plus 20 which is equals to 38 marks. So that's why I am telling your vector algebra section is a very, very, very important chapter in your 12th standard. You cannot avoid that vector algebra because vector algebra is comparatively to other units, it's one of the very easiest unit. One more thing I am going to tell you, in 10 marks you know that we will be having 15 questions. Out of that 15 questions, we have to answer 10 questions. But the 17th one is a compulsory one. You will not avoid that. You are compulsory, you are going to answer the 70th question. So the chances, the probabilities will be on the vector algebra side and analytical geometry chapter. So therefore, you cannot avoid, you cannot play with your vector algebra. Therefore, always go for vector algebra. Okay? So maybe there are some possibilities that comes under your 70th question. So because almost uh, 20 public, 21 public questions we have faced, out of that, most of the question papers, the compulsory question will be, comes under analytical geometry or from this vector algebra. So always remember that this is one of the very important chapter. Before we are going to discuss vector algebra, keep it in your mind, this is one of the very important chapter which has got a very good weightage because it has got 38 marks. So from that 38, two 10 marks are there. So now we are going to discuss the 10 marks question. First 10 mark, you let us take down. Prove by vector method. Prove by vector method. Prove by vector method. Cos A plus B is equals to cos A cos B minus cos A, sorry, minus sin A sin B. So we have four problems like this cos A plus B, cos A minus B, sin A plus B, sin A minus B. If it is cos A plus B and cos A minus B, if the problem comes under like this, you have to use the dot product. And if it is comes under sin A plus B or sin A minus B, you have to use your vector product. Okay, so before you are going to the problem, I will give some important uh, uh, tips, important points to remember before you are going to solve this problem in vector algebra because there are some very important uh, terms where very important things are there, very important uh, uh, tips to for uh, vector algebra. Let us take down some of the very important, then we will go for this uh, uh, problems, okay. First one, let us go for dot product. Dot product. Dot product or otherwise called as scalar product. In dot and scalar product, we have various properties are there. Let us take down some of the properties. By definition, we can say your dot product A vector dot B vector is equals to modulus of A modulus of B cos theta. And then with second one, your modulus of A vector, there is angle between A vectors and B vector, which is equals to theta is equals to cos inverse of A vector dot B vector divided by modulus of A vector and modulus of B vector. And then the third one, so angle between the vector e theta equal to cos inverse of a vector dot b vector divided by modulus of a and modulus of b, right? Then which is, then next one, the properties using a dot product, i dot i, j, k, i, j, k, so which is equals to, i dot i is equals to 1, 0, 0, j dot j becomes 0, only i dot i, j dot j, k dot k equal to 1. This is the property of a dot product, 0, 0, 1. I can say i dot i equals to j dot j is equals to k dot k is equals to 1. Next one. 
if a vector dot b vector equals to 0, then a vector is perpendicular to b vector. Then a vector is perpendicular to b vector. The next one, work done by a force, work done by a force is equals to f vector dot d vector, where f vector is called a force and d vector is said to be the displacement. Okay? The last one, let us take down the projection of the projection of b vector on a vector, which is equals to a vector dot b vector divided by modulus of a vector. So this is the projection of b vector on a vector. So this is all about that dot product. Now we'll pass on to the cross product. Now we'll pass on to the cross product. Cross product are otherwise said to be the vector product. Cross product or vector product. Vector product or cross product. <coughs> so now what do you mean by vector product? There we have a dot product or cross product. The definition we can say A vector cross B vector is equals to modulus of A vector, modulus of B vector, sin theta here, yeah, okay? Sin theta n cap. Here your n cap is a unit vector which is perpendicular to both A vector and B vector. So always remember the n cap is nothing but a unit vector which is perpendicular to both a vector and b vector. So if you want to remove the unit vector, let us take the modulus. Modulus of a cross b is equals to modulus of a, modulus of b, sin theta. Then the third one, so to find the n cap unit vector, your unit vector n cap is equals to a vector cross b vector divided by modulus of a and modulus of b. A vector cross B vector divided by modulus of A cross modulus of B. So this is your unit vector. Next one, if A vector cross B vector is equal to 0 vector, then we can say A vector and B vector are parallel. They are parallel to each other, A vector and B vector. The fifth property we can say, which is equal to cross product, I, J, K. So here, I, J, K. So here we can say I cross I is equal to 0. I cross J, we can say I cross J is equal to K vector because clockwise. So next I cross K, but K cross I there is minus J vector. J cross I which is equal to minus K vector. J cross K 0. J cross K vector which is equal to I vector. K vector cross I vector which is equal to J. K cross J is equal to minus I 0. So this is the important property of a Cross product, okay. The next one, sixth one, moment of a force. Moment of a force. These are very important tips, standard results to remember, okay. So these are the important results you have to remember in your mind. That's why I am giving moment of a force. Your M vector is equal to R vector cross F vector. The next one, area of a parallelogram. Your area of a parallelogram. area of a parallelogram which is equal to modulus of A cross B square units. Area of a rectangle, area of a rectangle, sorry, area of a triangle, sorry, area of a triangle whose vertices are A comma B comma C which is equal to modulus of AB vector cross AC vector square units. So this is uh, in uh, in dot product a dot b equals to b dot a. Obeys commutative property. Whereas in cross product it is not obeys commutative property. So therefore we can say so this a vector cross b vector is not equal to b vector cross a vector. Always remember this in cross product. So it does not hold commutative. Let us go for your scalar triple product. Scalar triple product. So your scalar triple product is if a vector cross b vector comma c vector or any three vectors, then we can say your scalar triple product is a vector dot b vector cross c vector or a vector cross b vector dot c vector. Otherwise, it was denoted by box of a comma b comma c. So this is said to be the scalar triple product. Box of a comma b comma c is the determinant of a b c. Now we can say the geometrical meaning of this is said to be 
box of A comma B comma C is equal to volume of the parallel pipe volume of the parallel pipe having having A vector comma B vector comma C vector as coterminous edges as coterminous edges so this is the very important geometrical meaning of a scalar triple products always remember that this is your scalar triple product now if box of a comma b comma c is equals to zero if box of a comma b comma c is equals to zero then we can say the three vectors are coplanar which means a vector comma b vector comma c vector are coplanar okay next one vector triple product vector triple product so if a vector comma b vector comma c vector or any three vectors then we can say the vector triple product a vector cross b vector cross c vector is equals to a vector dot c vector into b vector minus a vector dot b vector into c vector and then a vector cross b vector cross c vector is equals to a vector dot c vector into b vector minus b vector dot c vector into a vector therefore your a vector cross b vector cross c vector always not equals to a vector cross b vector cross c vector so this does not holds commutative next one scalar product of four vectors scalar product of four vectors that is your a vector cross b vector dot c vector cross d vector is equals to determinant of a dot c into a dot d b dot c into b dot d next one a vector cross b vector cross c vector cross d vector that is vector product of four vectors then we can say a vector comma b vector comma d vector into c vector minus a vector comma b vector comma c vector into d vector so this is the first part of your vector algebra the next section we have lines and straight lines and planes now we'll just uh, uh, discuss the problems under this vector product right? vector product scalar product and product of three vectors and product of four vectors let us take down the first problem under 10 marks the first 10 marks problem take down prove by vector method prove by vector method cos a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sin a sin b so please listen carefully so so this is one of the 10 marks question in the first part of your vector algebra okay i told you that we have a four problems like this one is cos a plus b another one is cos a minus b if it is cos a plus b and cos a minus b think that that is comes under your dot product you have to use the dot product method if it is sin a plus b and sin a minus b you have to use the vector product method now how we are operating how we are going to solve this problem so let us draw a diagram x axis and y axis so this is x and this is y so this is z axis from this we are taking a two angles one is called angle xop consider this as a and angle xoq let us consider this as b therefore the angle of poq is a plus b okay now in the xoy plane we are taking that so that the constructions are very important therefore we can say the angle of xop is equals to a angle of xoq is equals to b angle of poq is equals to a plus b okay from the figure so now i am taking a two points l and l dash take l comma l dash on op and oq okay now i am taking ol that is l point and here i am taking l dash join join lm and l dash m dash perpendicular to x and y axis perpendicular to x axis join perpendicular to x axis okay now we can say draw lm okay 
now L dash M dash. So we have a two right angle triangles O M L. Another one is called O M dash L dash. Such that such that O L is equals to O L dash is equals to one unit. So we are taking the two points L and L dash. We are joining the two perpendicular lines L M and L dash M dash. We have found that we having a two right angle triangles. One is called O L M. Another one is called O L dash M dash. Okay. Now it is given that your O L is equals to O L dash is equals to one unit. Now we are taking the first right angle triangle in the right angle triangle O L M. Okay. So we can say in the right angle triangle O L M. I can able to find out sin A because O L M we have. So this is B. So in the O L M we have. So sin A is equals to opposite side by adjacent side. That is, you can say M L divided by O L. Okay. So your sin A is equals to M L by O L. I told you your O L is equals to one. Therefore, I can say your M L is equals to sin A. I want to find out what is M L vector. What do you mean by M L vector? M L which direction is going about x y axis? So always we know that we have three unit vectors: i vector, j vector, and k vector. So the corresponding i vector goes to x axis, j vector goes to y axis, and z, uh, k vector goes to z axis. Therefore, since it is uh, goes up, therefore it is about y axis. For y axis, the unit vector is j vector. Therefore, I can say it is sin a j vector. Similarly, let us find out cos a. What do you mean cos adjacent side by hypotenuse? Your adjacent side is O M. Your hypotenuse is O L. Already we know that O L is equal to one unit. Your O M by one. Therefore, your O M is equal to cos A. Now to find out the O M vector, let us find out O M in which direction it goes in x axis. In x axis, the unit vector is i vector. Therefore, I can say cos A i vector. Are you clear? So we found out M L vector, O M vector from your triangle, right angle triangle O L M. Similarly, we have triangle, right angle triangle. O L dash M dash in right angle triangle O L dash M dash we can say your sin B opposite side by hypotenuse we can say your opposite side is L dash M dash okay your opposite side is L dash M dash or M dash L dash now divided by hypotenuse that is O L dash which is equals to L dash M dash that is M dash L dash divided by one, which is equals to M dash L dash. Therefore, which is equals to sine B is equals to M dash L dash. Now find out M dash L dash vector, which is equals to sine B. Listen carefully. M dash L dash vector. Usually it will go up. If it is in M L, we can say y axis. It is opposite to y axis. So the unit vector for y axis is i. Now the direction has changed. Therefore, you have to say it is minus j vector. Therefore, I can say minus sine b j vector. And next one, cos b, adjacent side. That is O M dash vector divided by O L dash vector. O L dash is one. Therefore, O M dash by O L dash. To find out O L dash is one. To find out the O M dash vector, in which direction the O M O M dash will pass goes. Therefore, it is about x axis. Therefore, the unit vector is i. Therefore, your O M dash is equals to cos B I vector. Okay, so now therefore M dash L dash vector equals to minus sin B. Your O M dash is equals to cos B I vector. Now let us find out what is O L and what is O L dash. Let us find out what is O L and what is O L dash. So from the vector law of addition, so we can say your O L vector is equals to triangle law of addition O M vector plus M L vector. Is it right? O M vector plus M L vector. What is O M vector? We have found out that your O M vector is equals to cos A I vector, and your M L vector is what plus sin A J vector. Similarly, let us find out O L dash vector. So your O M dash vector plus M dash L dash vector. Your O M dash vector is equals to cos B I vector minus M dash L dash. Find out. Oh, found out. Only. 
we have in the uh, found out that m dash n dash is equals to minus sin b g vector. Therefore, minus sin b j vector. Now, using the property or using the definition, we are going to find out y l that y l m dash vector. Now, you just uh, rub this one. Now, let us consider. Let us go for the next one. Cos b i minus sin b j. Now, your y l vector dot y l dash vector is equals to using the property. Now, OM, OL dot OL dash vector. We know that I dot I equals to 1, J dot J equals to 1, I dot I which is equals to cos A cos B minus J dot J1 sin A sin B. Are you clear? Right? So, this is the dot product property. By definition, we know that A vector dot B vector is equals to modulus of A modulus of B cos theta. Here, your A cos B that is taken as first equation. By definition, by definition, your OL vector dot OL dash vector is equal to modulus of OL and modulus of OL dash vector into cos. Your theta is nothing but A plus B. For OL and OL dash, the angle of OL and OL dash, that is angle of POQ is equal to A plus B. It is from your diagram. It is from your figure. Now I can say your cos A plus B, OL is modulus of OL is 1. OL dash, we have taken in the initial beginning of the problem, OL and OL dash equals to 1. Therefore, your OL that OL dash vector is equals to 1 into 1. We will have cos A plus B. Now, you compare equation 1 and 2. From 1 and 2, we can say that your cos A plus B is equals to cos A cos B minus sin A sin B. Cos A cos B minus sin A sin B. Okay? Are you clear? So, therefore, this is all about this first problem. You have to prove by vector, where vector method cos A plus B is equal to cos A cos B minus sin A sin, sin B. Okay?